Hi guys, so this beautiful lady you see here is a medical doctor from Ghana, right? From Ghana. Yes. She's working in the UK, not as a doctor, not as a nurse, not as a physician associate, but as a care assistant. Today we're going to find out why. Stop that. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome once again to my channel. I'm happy to have you here on the channel. I talk about migration, I talk about nursing, about life in the UK as an immigrant in general. So if these are topics that interest you, please do consider subscribing. Today I have here a YouTuber, a medical doctor called The Golden Girl MD. How long have you been in the UK, first of all? So I've been in the UK for about three years now in total. I've been going back and forth between Ghana and the UK, but then I came here permanently in April of 2022. So then I've been here ever since then. So that's over a year and you have been working as a carer the entire time so i started working as a carer from march of this year so just a few months yeah. so prior to working as a carer what were you doing i was in ghana working as a medical doctor so like i said i've been going back and forth and um, that's because i was still doing my housemanship which is like the training period you do after medical school so i was doing that in ghana and then i came to the uk but i mean i have a little one so i spent like a year being home taking care of my little one because my husband was uh, working full-time he's also in doctor so i guess people are really really confused so your husband is a doctor yes. and your husband moved to the uk to work as a doctor on a yeah. health and care worker visa to work as a medical doctor in the uk so your husband went so you are your husband's dependent and you yes. also happen to be a medical doctor however when your husband moved you were coming to visit going back because you have money going back ghana uk ghana uk or let's say you were doing your internship in ghana at the time so you were you know going back and forth and when you finally moved in Perth, Permanently after your internship, you had a baby, so you had to stay home for one year. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just met you two minutes forty six seconds ago, and I've said your whole life story. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> so after maybe now the baby's a bit okay, so you can start work, and then you started mm -hmm. as a carer. So you've been working as a carer from March this year. Mm -hmm. So. How is it? What kind of facility do you work? Okay, so first of all, I work with an agency, okay? So with agencies, you would usually go to wherever. I mean, wherever is available. My very first shift was in a care home. But ever since then, I've been going to support homes. So I get shifts mostly from support homes. So that's what I've been doing the majority of the time. People always get confused, especially those that are not in the UK. Yes, when I say agency, they're like, which agency? Is it the ones that help us come here? So guys, we do have international recruitment agencies that help people to relocate. And then we do have agencies in the UK as well that help people get temporal jobs. Let me put it like that. Or sometimes even permanent jobs. Okay. So for me, let's say if I want some extra cash, I can register with another healthcare recruitment agency. They'll give me some training. They'll take my CV, a couple of documents. And then if there's a shift somewhere, let's say another care home is short, maybe one of their nurses is sick or on leave or whatever. They can ask me, no, can you quickly go there and fill up the space? And I can say, oh yes. Usually those temporal jobs they pay much higher so she the golden girl md doctor mm -hmm. she's registered one of those agencies so they call her as and when but it's a bit inconvenient because sometimes it's like a short notice and then sometimes you have to travel for a longer time to get to the place so those are the disadvantages but like i said it pays her much higher so you work in a care home and you also work as a support worker what is the experience like so honestly before i started working i was a bit anxious because of I watch YouTube a lot. That's how come I watch you a lot. But um, I've heard so many stories about care homes, you know, domiciliary, support homes, things like that. And I really wondered, will I really be able to do this properly? Will I be able to enjoy this? But to be frank, the experience has been very good. I'll be honest. First of all, I would say that my agency has been really, really good with giving me enough shifts. So having enough shifts hasn't been a problem for me. I remember one particular week I worked for like 69 hours, like because <laughs> I had I had even more shifts than that, but I just couldn't physically do it. So they gave me more than enough shifts. And then also every single support home I've been to, I've had a very good experiences. I like the I like the clients. I like the fact that I'm able to help people. Um, and I believe that it's all about the mindset and what you think about the work that you're doing you are literally helping people if god forbid you were to have someone were to have a family member that was in role you would do exactly the same things but in this case you are being paid to do it so honestly I've, I've had a very nice time i've made a lot of friends overall had a very very good experience i'll have to be honest about that wow yeah. When you came, you obviously had to write a CV to go to this um, agency. Did you yes. have to apply with the CV yet, right? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, did you tone down your CV? Mm, okay. Did you That's tone a very good down? question. Or you just left it like that? I left it like that, to be honest. And I think... Say? 
I think it's also because I was registering with an agency. It's not like a permanent post. And so my agency, I just gave my experience, you know, went to school here. I worked as a medical doctor for two years in this hospital. To be frank, I used the exact same CV that I used in applying for my medical jobs. And it wasn't a problem. Also because this particular agency will train you if you're new to care anyways. So with regards to my CV, I did not tone it down. I didn't even edit it. I just updated it and then I sent it over to them and they were happy. Wow. There's this guy who was a physician assistant back in Ghana and he came here and he's not being able to, you know, there's no physician assistant room here and the pathway for internationally trained physician assistants in ghana is a bit tough so he's not able to so he's been working as a carer ever since he came and i wanted to interview him as in like his experience he says no nobody from ghana knows i'm working as a carer here they all think i'm a doctor here nobody nobody knows and it got to me that he's probably shy of what he's doing here but like you said it's all care work and when there's opportunity for people to relocate to the uk as carers came i had i have a video that i did where i was telling people that see there's nothing wrong with you as a nurse or wherever coming my pastor is a doctor but when he came here he started as a carer he's a consultant here you know he started as a carer there's absolutely nothing wrong with it and even me in my care home sometimes when they are short of carers i work as a carer now that i have a baby i don't get to do that and now we have enough stuff but i used to do that and i used to even like that one more so obviously i'm sure you're in the process of doing your registration to join the general medical council right yeah so i actually have my registration ah, <laughs> how long is it because i was still doing my housemanship training in ghana you know, I didn't have a lot of free time. So in all, I'll say it took me like a year and a half. What people don't know is that you see if you want to work as a doctor in the UK, it's a process. Your registration with the Medical and Dental Council of Ghana is not valid here. You still have to write IELTS. In between those times, you are still trying to get slots to write Flap 1, Flap 2, which are not very easy to come by, to be frank. And then afterwards, you have to apply for the jobs. If someone asks me um, in my comments that, is there something wrong with, you know, my certificate or my license? Well, why am I working as a healthcare assistant? I'm like, there's really nothing wrong. In fact, I have my GMC registration. I passed my PLAP 2 in one try. There's nothing wrong, but there is a process. So the question I had to ask myself is, hey, why sit around when I can work and get some extra income? Extra income, it can go a long way. Experience. Because you probably it's hear a few words that you never heard of in Ghana, even though you're a doctor. There's not there's nothing like safeguarding in Ghana. Maybe, maybe preparing for the plab, you read about it, but actually working in the care sector, it's it's different, you know. It is, it is. And to be frank, you know the funny thing? I have like applied for a few medical jobs, I've done a few interviews, and by the grace of God, one of them has proven to be very positive. My agency gave like very, very good reference for me. You know, and this is from like a UK employer and the person is saying this person is really good. And my colleagues, when they heard that, oh, I'm moving on to start my work soon, they're all very excited. I mean, it hasn't changed me. It hasn't made me anything different. If anything, I'm a few thousand pounds richer and I've helped people. So and you're uh, there's nothing to say about it. Experience. Exactly. The reference. It's all good. It's good. Wow. I'm so happy for you. Let's Thank talk about you. the money. Okay. Obviously, you worked in Ghana for a while as a doctor. Mm -hmm. And you've worked as a care assistant here as well. Which mm -hmm. one pays more? Okay. If we take the money the, in terms of quantity, of course, being a carer in the UK, I think, is more. But if you look at other things like the expenses, rent, council tax, um, child care, <laughs> which is something we are all trying to navigate and figure out here. I'll say living in Ghana, it's easier to live on a doctor's salary, I must say. I've made quite a lot of money just working as an agency carer or support worker. Please, my viewers, they don't like quite a lot and then they want figures like... Oh, okay. So it's... my agency pays £12.50 an hour. Minimum. Wow. This minimum. is what some nurses are getting in NHS. You know that. Yeah. So agency. if I do a weekend or I do a bank holiday, then I get more. So averagely, how much were you bringing home a month from agency or per week? £700 a week. Wow after tax so guys i hope you're taking tips because there's so many people there's some nurses married to doctors and maybe they think the pathway for nurses is quite easier so the nurse should just do the process and come and then they'll all move along and then when they come they will start the process or anything so i, I envy you and your husband so much because now you're going to be bringing two medical doctor salaries in the house hey hey for the base of
Yes. Right. You as a doctor working as a carer, what would you say are the major challenges? The first thing I'll say is the mindset. Um, let's just be frank. As human beings, working as a doctor from Ghana and the prestige that comes with working as a doctor. The way you are respected in Ghana in your lab coats, doc, 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 doc. And you come here and it's like you're under a nest. Like. Exactly. So if you, if you don't have a certain mindset you will not be able to do it there are people i know who are in the uk who are doctors but they would rather go and work in tesco or somewhere else than to do hca work and it's only because they don't want people to see them as less than especially people from back home the second thing is that the challenge is that when you get too comfortable in being a carer you can just, you know, when you just find the routine, exactly, when you find the routine, you're going to work, your life is comfortable, you're taking care of your bills, there is that likelihood that you will not want to, you know, take your club one, your club two, because they involve a lot of money. And so you can easily say, okay, fine, I'm comfortable, let me just, you know, be an HCA and move on. But really, you're a medical doctor, you've spent so many years in medical school, and I think you just owe it to yourself to just try as much as possible to just aim for that. Even if it's not immediate, but you should work towards that. You shouldn't be comfortable. So that's the second challenge. So that's, that's basically it. Mainly the mindset. Mainly the mindset. Wow. Yeah. Which part of the UK are you? So I live in Suffolk in a town called Ipswich. So that's where I am. So how do you deal with childcare, you, like you and your husband? Okay, so currently we don't have any help, but currently for the past few months, my little one has been in Ghana with my mother-in-law. Okay. That's just what we had to do so that I could start working and I could like, you know, sort myself out and also so that I could get a medical job and then we can sort out childcare. Please. How old is your little one? Oh, he's a year and eight months. So. When are you planning on going back for him or her soon? Yes, so he's going to be coming with my mother-in-law very soon, so... Even God for that. Yeah, I hope soon. your mother-in-law stays for a while, so that you 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 sort of like find your way around how you're going to. I hope she's watching this video. <laughs> I'll tell she... her that Nanel says that she stays for a long time. Mother-in-law, ma, please stay. Yes. We need you guys. That's our blessing in this UK here. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I'm sure she'll stay for a while. Yeah. By God's grace. So there are some doctors, or are being approached by some doctors who wanted to use their carer visa routes to come to the UK because they thought it was the easiest way, you know, and then when they come, they'll find money through the care work to write their plug one and plug two, blah, blah, blah. Would you say it's good? And what would be your advice to such people? Personally, I think it's better to sit your clubs, apply for a tier two visa, and then come as a doctor. I think Why? That one's better. It's more difficult, but it's better. I think in that way, okay, first of all, doctors are in very great demand in the UK. And it's generally easy to get a job as a medical doctor. I think nowadays, well, from what I see on YouTube and what I see on the internet, it's also becoming quite challenging to even come as a, as a carer. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I think if you can come as a medical doctor, it would be better. But I do appreciate the fact that the clubs are very expensive. How much is so, it? So club one cost about 249 when I took it. But I know it has gone up. And then club two, when I took it, I took it just last year, December. Club two was 900 and a little over 900 pounds. And that's not even what makes it more expensive. The thing is that club two can only be taken in the UK. So, so your if you're flight, not... your visa, visa application and all that. Exactly. Become... You have to attend an academy. Most people like to attend academies because that's what's going to help you to get the practical aspect because all the mannequins and you know IV cannulation and things you will not have the mannequins in your house you have to attend an academy to do that and for my academy I paid about 650 pounds so adding like you said air tickets accommodation because you have to be in the UK a week or two to prepare it's quite a lot and that doesn't guarantee you a job <laughs> you know if of course things are very difficult back in your home country wherever you're from I mean, you do what you have to do. You have to come here as a carer. It doesn't make you less of a doctor. You can still come as a carer, work, save up the money, take your plabs, and then go from there. Nobody's going to fault you. Because the other thing people have to think about is the gap. You see, when you have a gap in your employment as a medical doctor, it becomes more difficult. 
So for me, that was one of my challenges because I had a gap. But by the grace of God, because my gap is also just because of childcare, most people in the UK are very understanding about that. Wow. I forgot to ask you, where did you have your medical school? I went to medical school in Tamale, University for Development Studies. In yes. Ghana. And your high school? High school, I went to Holy Child School. Oh, okay. I was yeah. in Roses, so... Oh, Tamale. wow. Oh, yeah. great. So it was really nice talking to you guys. I hope you have learned something. I'll leave her details in the description and you can see her the name of her YouTube on the screen as well. So you can reach out to her. If you're a doctor, you have um, a partner or a spouse who's a doctor and then you need information from her, you know she just went through the process so it's fresh in her mind so thank you guys so much and thank you the golden girl md for coming on my channel it's being an honor bye, bye. <laughs>